Potassium is a very important mineral and electrolyte for the body. Unfortunately, potassium deficiency is super common today and can lead to wide-ranging problems. In this video, I want to talk about what exactly potassium is, its roles in the body, and how to get enough of it, which means we will talk about potassium supplementation at the end of the video. Let's start by discussing what potassium is and why we need it. Potassium is an essential dietary mineral, meaning we need to get it from food and cannot produce it ourselves. In fact, it is the third most abundant mineral in the body after calcium and phosphorus. And as you can imagine, we need quite a lot of it every day to keep potassium levels high. The RDA for healthy people is around 3,500 to 4,700 milligrams per day, depending on your age and gender. Potassium has several different functions in the body. The main ones are 1. To act as a solvent. Together with sodium, potassium acts as the body's solvent. That's because both are monovalent elements, meaning they have one free electron in the outermost shell. With it, they can dissolve many compounds made of other minerals. This is especially important to keep vital nutrients in solution, for example, to avoid tissue calcification, where calcium comes out of the bones where it's supposed to be and settles in soft tissue where it's not supposed to be. So, sufficient potassium and sodium help minerals get where they're supposed to be and keep them clear of areas where they're not supposed to be. Next, potassium acts as an electrolyte for your body's energy metabolism. Together with magnesium, potassium is the main intracellular electrolyte, meaning it is found mostly inside of the cell. This is unlike calcium and sodium, which are found in higher concentrations outside the cells. The famous sodium-potassium pump pumps sodium out of the cells and potassium into them, which sets up an electrical charge that keeps the body functioning correctly. And third, it sends nerve signals and allows for muscle contraction. You see, the nervous system sends messages between your body and brain. These messages are delivered in the form of nerve impulses and help regulate your body's functions such as heartbeat and reflexes. To generate a nerve impulse, sodium ions move into cells and potassium ions move out of cells which, like I said before, sets up an electrical charge. This is critical not just for our nervous system, but also for muscular contractions. So as you can see, potassium is critical to health. And in summary, its most important functions are to act as a solvent in their body, to act as an electrolyte for your body's energy metabolism, and to maintain nerve function and muscle contraction. If your body doesn't get enough potassium, this affects its ability to generate these nerve impulses, which in turn can create all sorts of problems, such as muscle weakness, muscle twitching, and heart palpitations. Unfortunately, this very scenario is not uncommon, as potassium deficiency is fairly widespread. And at the same time, the importance of potassium is highly underestimated. The main reason for this widespread deficiency is that most people simply don't eat enough fruits and vegetables which are the richest foods in potassium. Now, pretty much all vegetables can be seen as a good potassium source, but especially high amounts are found in veggies such as carrots, avocado, tomatoes, kohlrabi, and potatoes. Certain fruits such as bananas, apricots, or drinks like coconut water also have a lot of potassium, but other fruits such as apples don't. So please don't rely only on fruits to reach your daily potassium intake, and always make sure to also eat plenty of veggies. Just as a side note, cooking hard vegetables such as carrots helps break down their fiber, which makes it easier for the body to absorb the minerals in them. Before we get to the last part of this video, which is potassium supplements, I quickly want to talk about how to effectively measure potassium levels in the body to check for a deficiency. Most people will recommend a blood test, especially to avoid hypo and hyperkalemia, which is too little or too much potassium in your blood. Both can be very problematic and in some cases even deadly, so it's good to rule them out. But to be honest, most people have only a latent potassium deficiency that will not show up on a regular blood test. That's because most of the potassium in your body isn't actually stored in your blood, but instead in the cells in your body tissue, including your organs and bones. Because the body always wants to keep blood mineral levels stable, if it is low in potassium, it will simply pull stored potassium into the blood to make up for any deficiency. 
That's why a blood test is usually the last indicator to spot a potassium deficiency before things get really problematic. A better alternative is a properly performed hair analysis, which I explain in more detail in a different video. This then takes me to the last part of the video, which is potassium supplements. Let's suppose you find out that you have a potassium deficiency, as do so many people. Should you supplement, and if so, with what? In general, a healthy diet should always be your first option, which, like I mentioned before, means primarily eating more cooked vegetables and some fruit. However, like I said in the beginning, the RDA for potassium is fairly high at almost 5,000 mg per day, and most people will not eat enough veggies or other healthy potassium sources to reach it, let alone overcome a deficiency. So in that case, potassium supplements can definitely help you out. And I personally do supplement with potassium. The most common forms are potassium chloride and potassium citrate. While both will help bring up low potassium levels, potassium chloride seems to be the more reliable option, whereas potassium citrate is more often used to combat kidney stones, as the potassium along with the citric acid helps prevent and dissolve them. This means you generally want to go with potassium chloride. The problem, however, is that the FDA limits potassium chloride supplements to under 100 mg per dose, which is why you see so many products with 99 mg capsules or tablets. The reason for this is that ingesting too much potassium at once can create serious health problems, such as heart arrhythmia. However, this usually only happens if you have an existing kidney condition that hinders them from eliminating the excess potassium or if you take a lot more than the recommended supplement dose all at once. In general, if you decide to supplement, start with a small dose of around 100 mg to 300 mg of potassium and then work your way up to see how your body reacts. I wouldn't go over 1000 mg of supplemental potassium per day and always make sure to take it in several doses throughout the day so your body can filter out any excess. Of course, always talk to a doctor about this first, since like I said before, taking too much potassium at once can be problematic. One more thing, if you get weird side effects such as heart palpitations, even from very low doses of potassium, that's usually an indicator of a calcium or sodium deficiency, which are both antagonists to potassium. I say this because when I first started supplementing, I had this problem, and it would only go away after I also started taking calcium along with the potassium. Okay, to wrap up this video and summarize the most important learnings, potassium is an important mineral and electrolyte, and it needs to be consumed regularly. It sits mostly inside of the cells and controls nerve function and muscular contraction, among other things. Having enough potassium in your body is also important for keeping calcium in solution and avoiding tissue calcification. Always make sure to get most of your potassium from dietary sources, such as vegetables and fruits. And if you decide to supplement, use low doses at first and talk to your doctor about possible health problems.